afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Dan Ryan, and I'm here to talk about how we're using computer vision at VergeSense to change everything about the places that we work in. So corporate real estate is one of the largest asset classes in the world. It's about a trillion dollars. And everything about it is changing right now. Uh, you heard from some of the folks earlier at Notel. Companies don't want their offices to be like Mad Men. They want them to be like WeWorks. They want them to be modern, to serve the modern workforce that they're trying to attract. Um, so right now, every co uh, corporation is talking about what their strategy is for the agile workplace. workplace. And by 2020, 60% of organizations are going to transform to agile work strategies. With that, real estate also happens to be extremely expensive. Uh, it's typically the number two cost for any company after their salaries. This room right now probably runs $100,000 to $150,000 a year in leasing fees. And today, this is basically the best solution we have for measuring, designing, observing, and operating a building. People with clipboards, maybe they have iPads. That's really the, um, the, the best solution that's currently available in the market. So let me show you how we can do a little better. At VergeSense, we've developed a hardware product. Um, it's, what's really unique about it is that it's incredibly simple to install. It's 100% wireless, um, so there's no Cat5 cable, no wires to run. This means that we reduce the cost of installation for a vision sensor by a factor of 10. Um, we've deployed hundreds and hundreds of these devices. I'll show you some examples of what that looks like, but um, the simplicity of installation uh, is a really big differentiator for us. The other piece that we do to make it really simple is we have a cellular backhaul capability which in a corporate B2B environment means I don't have to integrate with the internal IT network. So again, simple, fast, scalable, easy to install. Um, with that, we're not just providing the hardware, we're allowing the corporate real estate folks to collect a bunch of data about how the building's being used. We deliver insights and analytics from that data in a portal that we design and deliver. We also funnel that data into a whole bunch of other systems through an API. These include things like room booking systems, desk reservation systems, uh, even things like building automation. So we start to funnel source of truth about where people are in the building into a whole variety of different things. Um, this is an example of, of what that portal looks like today. Um, we provide a bunch of analytics out of the box in our own product, um, but a big part of what we do is we also enable export of our data to other third-party BI tools to be flexible and meet the needs uh, of the clients that we sell to. This is an example of um, one of our first projects. Uh, we did this with a, a major uh, Fortune 100 company. Uh, we actually installed this back in October. It was a paid project. If you sit up, look up there in the ceiling, uh, that's what the product looks like installed. Um, and we got 115 sensors installed in a single day. Um, this is successful for us. Uh, this client's now rolling us out at multiple locations. We actually did two more this past weekend, um, both um, you know, similar magnitude, about 200 sensors, all done in a single day. So highly scalable, highly easy, and flexible to install. Um, these are some of the folks that we're working with. Um, we've seen a lot of demand for the product, uh, especially over the course of this year, uh, as Agile has become more and more important in corporate real estate. Uh, we've already done 500,000 in bookings, uh, and we're on track to do about a million in revenue by the end of the year. Uh, the revenue mix is partly hardware, so our business model is to sell the sensor, but we also bundle an annual software license for the data services. It's about a three to one ratio between hardware and software uh, revenue. And then, um, you know, trying to take a look at the total market opportunity. In the US alone, there's about 12 billion square feet of office space. And if we start looking at some of the pricing that we've got from our early clients, you're looking at about a $6 billion a year market just in the US alone. And then finally, I'll close with team. Um, so myself and my co-founder have a, a long, uh, somewhat scarred history in, in IoT. So we've been through a startup before. Um, that product um, and that company was acquired and went on to be uh, phenomenally successful with the acquirer. Um, we shipped millions of units of that, that previous, previous product. Um, so we've got you know, very strong background in hardware, uh, data analytics and services. And um, that's it. Thank you. All right, well done, Dan. As, you, as everybody can see, not only diversity in the across vision, but diversity across all of our contestants and judges and everybody. Who wants to go first? I'll ask a question. Um, how many of the sensors do you have to create ahead of selling them? So are you mass 
creating them or is it just in time? I'll show you some photos of the build we did last week, which is me screwing in a lot of sensors at our office. So um, right now we're doing um, basically manufacturing on demand. Uh, so we don't hold inventory ahead of orders. Um, right now, as we've started to see some more demand, um, we're starting to interview some CMs uh, to help scale up production. But thus far, it's been a uh, you know blisters and screwdrivers and uh, internal assembly, which you can be mentioned fun. the uh, the revenue split as three to one between hardware and software. How does that change over time? I think over time, as more you know hardware and other competition comes in the market, you probably see the price of that uh, the hardware piece go down. Um, and as our scale moves up, we'll probably want to reduce the cost of the hardware. Um, for the data services piece, um, if you look at the annual cost of our service compared to the cost of the real estate that we're typically managing, um, we're less than 1%. Uh, and then as we tie ourselves into more and more infrastructure in the building through our API, um, we think that that recurring revenue stream is going to be pretty defensible. But I think the hardware piece will, over time, be reduced. David? Question about the market and maybe where you're headed. Do you see um, more and more different single-use sensors being applied at offices, or do you see a convergence of sensors and their applications? And I guess to, the question to you is, are, is your sensor going to start to do more, or will you become a software layer and utilize currently available sensors in the future? It's a fundamental question, right, whether we go horizontal or stay sort of vertically focused. Uh, in the vertical that we're focused on now, corporate office vertical, um, we have seen demands for new types of data acquisition capability. So initially, we've just focused on you know, people counting. You know, where are the people in the space? Uh, we have had some demands for knowing, you know, is a desk, you know, cluttered and messy and that sort of thing. Um, so we think there's tons of opportunity in our vertical right now. Um, I think when you look at other verticals like retail or transportation or others, you'll see a lot of vertically specialized companies that focus on that. Uh, for us, we just want to dominate our vertical and kind of uh, eventually me maybe even get into the application layer in our vertical. But that's sort of the strategy. Jessica? Um, are there concerns around privacy and employees, you know, having messy desks and GDPR and all that? GDPR, <laughs> it's a huge uh, topic of discussion. Um, so typically, one of the nice things about Agile is that um, there's a lot of unbookable seating. Um, so flex seating in which the personally identifiable information can actually be captured. Um, one thing to be clear about, we skipped over technology. Uh, we don't actually store any of the images. It's all processed in the edge and discarded. Um, but we typically, for doing desk level sort of availability, um, don't recommend that clients deploy it over fixed seating for that exact reason. So uh, it is a huge topic of discussion, um, but it hasn't been a barrier for us to get traction in the market. Larry. Yeah, so tell us a bit more about how you use your product to improve those agile processes. And you gave like a couple of use cases, but love to learn a bit more. The, yeah, the, the most common one. Um, so everybody's had the experience of you're in a large office space, you can't book a room because the rooms are booked all the time. We actually ran a study with one client in which we compared the sensor data against the booking data um, that we got from Outlook. And 30% of the time, nobody was in the conference room, but you know, it showed up as occupied. And you know, other employees on the floor are complaining, we don't have enough conference rooms in the space. Well, if you have a sensor, you free up that space, make it available to somebody else. Um, so typically, a lot of the agile work strategy is in around identifying a place to go right now, making that data available for employees, either on a mobile app, which are more and more common in the workplace, uh, or we see a lot of kiosks that people deploy. And then we just, you know, our data feeds into an app that's running in a kiosk. So it's directing people places to go and work. Cool. Any other questions? We're all set. Thank you very much. Well Thank done. You. Great.